Well, this kind of sucks. It looks like the webcam for Old Faithful is down. It is not working. I just tried it almost 10 times. I don't know. I'm going to keep trying it as I talk. So, if you guys don't already know, my name is Ben Ferriolo, and I vigorously monitor and analyze seismic data from around the country, and sometimes the world. If you haven't already, please visit my website. A link is below in the description box, right under my email address. It contains a lot of cool stuff, including my new page dedicated to showing the 18 rapid-fire swarms that have occurred near West Thumb Lake at Yellowstone between 2018 and 2014. A link is below as well. Also check out Scott's new channel called the NW Geology Guy, of course link below as well. Now in this video I will be briefly talking about my two new blog posts. Keep an eye on the parts section below if you have already read some of the blog posts. A couple days ago there was some swarming where the Cascadia subduction zone ends and meets the California coastline, right near Petrolia, California. Now this swarm was peculiar in that it contained higher counts and magnitudes than we have seen in recent history. And it also carried with it near seismic silence for all of the continental United States. Well, except for Montana during that time period. Yes, that's right. Seismic activity in the continental United States, except for Petrolia, California and Lincoln, Montana, calmed dramatically in the days leading up to the Petrolia swarm during it and even after. I will get into that in just a second. In this video, and it's still not working, man, it looks very cold there, guys. Almost as cold as it is here, we got snow. For once, they haven't predicted, there hasn't even been a chance for snow at all during the entire winter. And then finally, on February 3rd, two days ago, we got a little bit of snow in the morning, just barely, just a little dusting, then it started to snow a lot in the evening. And then overnight, it snowed all night. We got about eight inches in the grass and a few inches on the ground. But there were also snow drifts because the, uh, the snow, my daughter was sad. We couldn't make a snowman. The snow was too powdery. And it created snow drifts. And there's also icicles outside right now, too. It looks really cool. It looks like a little uh, winter village out there right now. It looks pretty cool. Nothing like this, though. I mean, Yellowstone gets slammed with winter weather all the time. And I'm refreshing it, and it's still not doing anything. Still not working. Now, in this video, I'm going to talk about that swarm near Petrolia, California, as well as some extremely, extremely peculiar seismic events that were recently spotted in Hawaii on January 23rd, 2019, by seismic stations all across the Big Island. I think you're going to be very interested in what I have to show you today, guys. Something very interesting that I discovered. Well, actually, I think somebody, someone else discovered it because USGS labeled it as, quote unquote, other event. So they knew that these events happened. They just don't know what the heck they are. And I agree with USGS. They make no sense. These seismic events I'm about to show you later on in this video. You can skip to it now if you look at the parts section below. Wow. Just, just wow. They are crazy. I'll get into that in just a second. That find of those Hawaii events is very important, I believe, and personally is one of the most amazing seismic events I have ever gotten the chance to analyze. Also, I know I usually put out a monthly volcano report by now, but it is going to be late this time. I'm sorry, guys. I promise, though, I will try my best to complete it in the next two to three days. But first, let's just talk about the past 24 hours worth of reported seismic activity as of 12, 12 p.m. Pacific time, February 5th. 2019, along with a very quick look at a few microquakes that have struck Yellowstone Lake. After that, we will get into the more important stuff. Again, it is 12, 12 p.m. Pacific Time, February 5th, 2019. This is the past 24 hours worth of seismic activity for all magnitudes. We have a 5.1 supposedly at 10.0 kilometers in depth near Azerbaijan. Apparently, 12 people did report feeling the Azerbaijan earthquake. So let's go back. And Hawaii just recently had one. Let's see, in the past 24 hours, there have been reportedly nine earthquakes. Look at this right here. Keep this in mind. You see this event right here? I have no idea how it's... Somebody felt it? Are you kidding me? One person reported feeling it. There's no way. A 2.2 at 35.4 kilometers in depth? Yeah, I highly doubt anyone felt it, but you never know. You never know. But I would like you to keep an eye on some of these deep events. Notice how they're happening around 30 kilometers to 40 kilometers, maybe a little bit above that. Notice that? Especially the most recent one occurring off the coast down here near the southern tip. You will see why this is important. Look at this location. 
Now, when you see the Hawaii events I'm going to show later in this video, you need to keep in mind that the three events that I discovered on seismic stations on January 23rd occurred right here. They occurred right here, right where this earthquake just struck, actually. And we have had some interesting seismicity after those three strange events. But again, keep that in mind. I don't want to spend too much time on Hawaii right now. We will get into that in just a little bit. Let me go to the United States. Let's go to Central U.S. Let's zoom out. Okay, so there's two over there, so we'll add two to the count. 72, so 74 earthquakes. Now it is finally starting to look a little bit more normal. Again, these are all magnitudes for the past 24 hours for the United States. Look at the continental United States. Of course, the count is not too low at all right now, but it is much lower than I have seen in recent months. For example, we usually get about 100 to 190 earthquakes in one day of all magnitudes for the entire continental United States. So why did seismic activity get pretty quiet once the swarms near Petrolia, California, which is apparently they're not reporting anymore right now. Apparently the swarming is done as of the past 24 hours, supposedly. But again, why did seismic activity get pretty quiet once the swarms near Petrolia, California and Lincoln, Montana hit? And now look, the swarm in Lincoln, Montana is calming down and the Petrolia swarm is calming down as well. But look, the earthquake count is rising. During the two days that the Petrolia earthquake swarm was occurring, we were seeing about 40 to 50 earthquakes in the United States in any given 24-hour period. That is very, very low. Again, I said there are about 100 to 190 earthquakes per 24 hours of all magnitudes, usually reported for the United States. During that time period, again, the Petrolia swarm started and seismic activity elsewhere in the United States calmed, again, except for Montana. But now that those two swarms stopped, look, it's rising again. It's slowly rising back to normal. So to me, that shows that something was going on. Those two swarms must have been connected to the seismic silence. Well, it wasn't really silent, silent, but it was a lot more quiet than it usually is. I don't know, guys. Seismic activity has been pretty weird lately. Here we are at isthisthingon.org. Let's go take a look at borehole 208 on the northern tip of Yellowstone Lake right here. And here's borehole 208. Notice it does seem like there were a few microquakes today. Now this disclaimer down here comes into effect today. You see that disclaimer UUSS will be transitioning to SSL on February 5th, 2019. Leaks may break. In my previous video, I already shot an email towards the University of Utah. They said it will not affect the data streams in any way. It probably won't even affect the online helicorders, otherwise known as webicorders. It probably won't affect them too much, but it might affect them a little bit. But still, the activity recorded by the seismic stations being uploaded into their database, that's still going to happen. So I'm, we're not going to lose any monitoring capabilities whatsoever. So that's a good thing. But again, you can see some microquakes here. And only a few of them showed on ceramic stations because they were very, very tiny. We do have a swarm, albeit a very minor swarm. But still, just because it's small, you shouldn't ignore it. Again, let's check it out. Here we are in the seismic program swarm. We just downloaded the recent data stream for borehole 208 on the northern tip of Yellowstone Lake. So let's go to downloads and let's open the most recent data stream. Press enter. Will it be borehole 208? Yes, it is. To start off, what I usually do is I turn off persistent rescale and set overlap to 95. Press OK. I don't need any filters right now. Here's the first earthquake right here. About 400 amplitude count, actually probably more like 320 amplitude count. Pretty small, pretty tiny, looks kind of deep. I'm going to guess maybe anywhere around maybe 7 kilometers in depth, something like that. I'm probably way off, but still. Let's go down. Again, this is borehole 208. Let's go down. There's another earthquake right here. All of them have high range frequencies. Notice that. So turn on the spectra. Most likely going to be very broad. Yep, very broad, even going past the preset 25 hertz line, even going far past that. So let's turn back on spectrogram and go forward. So there are two so far right there, and then we did see a slight increase right about 1146 UTC. There was one right there. Two little tiny guys. I don't even know if those are earthquakes or not. They're very tiny. 
And there's another one right there. So very, very minor swarm. I mean, I'm guessing probably the largest magnitude in this swarm. Probably going to be a 0 0.5 maybe. Maybe not even that. Zooming in. Yeah, very sharp waveforms. Very sharp. Very high frequencies. Yeah, very interesting. I don't know exactly where these are occurring right now. But I'm guessing since Borehole 208 did see these occur first, I'm guessing it is probably occurring somewhere near Borehole 208. And there's a few more right there. Again, let me turn on the spectrogram. Let me zoom it all the way out. You can see these lines right here. Those are all earthquakes. Let's zoom in. See, the swarm is very tiny, but still, it did occur. And there's a few more popping and cracking before then that I just showed. As of the most recent data stream, we see right here something very interesting coming in on these seismic stations at Yellowstone. Um, I This is only shown on Borehole 208 right now. Don't know what this is, but to me, this does look like some type of surface activity because let's check this out real quick. Actually, wait a second. Okay. Don't hold me to accountable on that, please. <laughs> I don't know if this is surface activity. Usually surface activity does carry some mid-range frequencies, but usually I'm not really seeing surface activity occurring below 5 hertz. I mean, obviously it probably can happen. But as of right now, as of 1224 p.m. Pacific time, February 5th, 2019, there is a strange low frequency event appearing on the Borehole 208 Seismo. But I do have to say I have not compared this to surrounding stations yet. So this is still up in the air, but why don't we open the seismic data stream for station YLA, which is very close to here, and YLT to see if this shows up at all. This starts around 2011 to 2012 UTC. As you can see here, I've opened the most recent data streams for YLA and YLT. Remember that strange event with some uh, dominant low frequencies below 5 hertz we're going to check and see if that's occurring on these stations as well because usually if it's seismic it will show on multiple surrounding stations especially if it's occurring at a depth around near where the magma chamber happens so trust me usually seismic events show up on multiple stations guys let's check yla here's yla and the most recent data stream is right down here Let's turn Persistent Rescale off and do 95 for the over overlap, excuse me. Remember how the weird low frequency event I just showed on Borehole 208? Remember how it started at about 2012 UTC? So let's see right here. Nope. We're way past 2012 UTC right here. Let me zoom out a little bit and do the spectrogram. Nope. I'm not seeing it at all. So, Borehole, sorry, not Borehole, Station YLA in the WY network is not showing that low frequency event, but it is showing these strange events that keep popping up at Yellowstone. I originally thought, you see this it starts right here, starts right here, ends right here, and I don't know where it ends because the data stream is not over yet, um, but I thought that this was a scaling issue. I thought that something was wrong with their helicorder, so I kind of looked past it. This is real, guys. There's an actual increase in amplitude during the time that it starts. Because this goes to about a maximum of 50 amplitude count. But whatever this is goes up to about possibly maybe 100, 150, possibly. Look right here. This is where it starts, right here. Normal background noise. And then all of a sudden, something happens, and it starts. And then we go through, we go through, we go through, we go through, and then blah, 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 we're down here, and boom, it ends. That is not a scaling issue, guys. Scaling issue would look way different than this. This is a real vibration, or a real something, because I have no idea. It is not a low-frequency tremor, though. It is too perfect. It looks man-made, in my opinion. Don't buy my head off. I'm just saying, this looks man-made. I don't know what the heck could cause it. Yes, guys, look at this. I highly doubt this is really seismic, but what the heck are they doing at the park right now? What are they doing? It doesn't even make sense. Look at how perfect these frequencies are. You should never see spikes this perfect. Ever. Okay, I'm getting off topic. Let's go to station YLT. Here I am in station YLT. That strange low frequency event shown on borehole 208. Started at about 2012. I want to see if it shows on here as well, and then we'll move on. Let's go to 2012 and nothing nothing at all let me zoom out spectrogram nope 
Not seeing anything, but look at this on YLT also. We see at the same time that strange tremor or vibration that is occurring on multiple stations is occurring here as well. And look at this. There's a big spike. There's a big spike right when it ends. Do you see that? Looks like someone turned something off. Doesn't it kind of look like that? But the thing is, is how come if it shows on YLT and YLA, how come it doesn't show on Borehole 208? I have no flippin' idea, but these strange vibrations that start out of nowhere are only occurring on stations in the WY network. For example, some of the stations in the PB network that reside right next to these stations that are detecting this, they're not detecting anything at all. So I am really scratching my head as to what the heck this could be. It is not a scaling issue as I thought it was before. It is a real vibration, so I don't know. And here are some of those microquakes that occurred at Yellowstone Lake. Very sharp amplitudes. Very sharp. Yep, there they are. Okay, so let's move on to the next course. So again, that swarm wasn't major by any count, and that low frequency event on Borehole 208 seems like it was probably surface noise since it's not showing on any other seismic stations. Now, let's real quick go to my blog post that I made about the Petrolia California Earthquake Swarm. If you have already read that blog post, you can skip this part. However, beware, do not skip too far since the main course of this video is right after. Alright guys, here we are at my Seismo blog for the Earthquake Swarm at the end of the Cascadia Subduction Zone near Petrolia, California. This is my recent blog post. Again, if you have already read this whole post, please skip it now and go forward. But here we go. Let's go first go to this image right here. Just get now please bear with me. I'm going to probably read really fast. So just bear with me, okay? Around the start of the new UTC day for February 2nd, 2019, an interesting earthquake swarm started to break out near Petrolia, California, where the Cascadia subduction zone ends and meets the California coastline. Swarms have occurred here before, but to the best of my knowledge, this is the largest swarm that this area has seen in a while. Also, something strange is right when this swarm was starting, seismic activity throughout the entire continental United States started to calm. Well, except for Montana, which did see a swarm as well, with some good-sized magnitudes. However, it was eerily quiet, except for those two locations. The first image above, which is this one right here, but I'm just going to go down to this one shows the swarm area in respect to the surrounding states. The second image, which I have shown right here above, is a zoomed-in look at the earthquakes reported in the swarm in respect to the closest seismic station, which is the station I will use for all of the data below. During the time period stated in the beginning of this post, there were 15 reported earthquake events, with many other earthquakes that have yet to be reported. For example, in regards to activity only on February 3rd, 2019, between the earthquake reported at 138 UTC to the earthquake reported at 737 UTC, there were approximately 16 events that have yet to be reported. They range in size from about magnitude 0.5 to magnitude 2.0. They're not major guys, but still they did happen. Between the earthquake reported for 737 UTC to the earthquake reported for 2218 UTC, there were approximately 25 events that have yet to be reported. They range in size from about 0.5 to 2.0. Below, I'm going to show the helicopters in slideshow format, blah, 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 blah. All right, guys, so let's scroll down just real quick. I do have in slideshow format some of the helicopters for the seismic activity. You could see some of the unreported events as well. Now, first, I showed the three major events. This was a magnitude 4.1 at supposedly 7.4 kilometers in depth. All of these event pages on here are as of 5.57 UTC, February 4th, 2019. And they are generated by USGS. These event pages are not generated by myself. At that time that I saved this image, there were about 47 people who reported feeling the 4.1. And here is the plot, the three plot image to the magnitude 4.1 at 7.4 kilometers in depth. Notice, although the seismic station KCO is extremely close to the swarm epicenter, why were the dominant frequencies below 5 hertz? I was expecting them to be about 10 to 15 hertz, but that's pretty low in my opinion. And then later there's a magnitude 4.3 at 7.3 kilometers in depth. Scroll down. Here is the three-plot image to the magnitude 4.3 right here. 
again at 7.3 kilometers in depth, and again with dominant frequencies below 5 hertz, which I thought was very interesting. Let's scroll down. And then the largest earthquake of the Petrolia California swarm was a magnitude 4.5 earthquake, supposedly at 7.7 .7 kilometers in depth. At the time of saving this image, over 262 people reported feeling this earthquake. Let's scroll down. Here is the three-plot image to the largest event, magnitude 4.5 at 7.7 .7 kilometers in depth, with dominant frequencies resting, again, below 5 hertz, but with a smaller spike at about, I'm going to say, probably 5.5 hertz to 6 hertz. And then down here, I do have a slideshow of some of the additional earthquakes. This was a 2.8. Here, let me go forward. All right. This was a magnitude 3.5 at 8.7 kilometers in depth. Again, notice the dominant low frequencies. But again, it, was, it wasn't a low frequency earthquake, guys. These were not low frequency earthquakes. By the way, though, a lot of these earthquakes did have elongated codas, meaning the end tail of the earthquakes to many of these earthquakes were a lot longer than what you would expect to see for tectonic events. So we saw elongated codas and dominant low frequencies. Of course, tectonic activity can possibly cause that stuff, but I am, I am trying to think in my head how, though. Obviously, these were tectonic in nature. I do believe these were definitely tectonic. Don't know what the Cascadia subduction zone was doing then, but this one is unreported. It was very small, but still, it was an earthquake, and it has yet to be reported. Here's another one, magnitude 3.6 at 6.9 kilometers in depth. Dominant frequencies are higher in this earthquake, actually, uh, resting below 10 hertz. This was a 3.0 at 4.8 kilometers in depth. Dominant frequencies remain below 8 hertz or so. Magnitude 3.4, excuse me, at 7.8 kilometers in depth. So yeah, I do have a few events in this slideshow as well. So what caused that earthquake swarm and why was there seismic silence during that time period? Now as of 12.38 p.m. Pacific Time, February 5th, 2019, the swarm near Petrolia, California is calming. I think it's pretty much over. Though there are still a few popping off here and there. But next let's move on to something very shocking and extremely intriguing that just recently occurred in Hawaii about a week and a half ago. First I will show a strange event in Alaska, but then I show the Hawaii events. Check this out guys, it is pretty crazy. In this blog post, I will show some info and seismic data to some very peculiar seismic events. One occurred in Alaska with a possible unreported event just prior, and the rest of the strange events I will talk about occurred in Hawaii. The main focus of this post, however, is the events that occurred in Hawaii. I really do not have a logical interpretation for these, so it would be wonderful if someone could help me understand what these are. Obviously, USGS doesn't really understand their origins either, otherwise they would not have been labeled as quote-unquote, other event. If you have not already, please click the title of this post or read more to continue. First off, I have a button that says click here to visit the USGS earthquake map for all of the events of this post. And they do, this map does contain a few extra ones. First, let's talk about the Alaska event. Here's the location of the magnitude 1.7 labeled as other event by USGS. So it is a strange event. Here's Alaska, Lucian Island chain. Let's scroll down, shall we? At 2023 UTC on February 3rd, 2019, a very strange seismic event was reported for USGS, or excuse me, reported by USGS for the Makushin Volcano in the Aleutian Island chain of Alaska. And then I leave a button for the info on the volcano itself if you want to learn about the Makushin Volcano. Now this magnitude 1.7 seismic event, reportedly at 35 kilometers in depth, was labeled as other event by USGS. This is understandable due to the fact that this seismic event was extremely strange. However, this comes nowhere close to the extremely peculiar Hawaii events that I'm about to show you in just a second. Which, to me, when I first saw them, my mind was blown. Now the first image you see is the location of the magnitude 1.7 and the image I'm showing right here is zoomed in to the location showing the closest seismic station to this event MAPS maps in the AV network so it could be connected to some type of volcanic process I don't know now below I'm going to show the seismic plots to the magnitude 1.7 strange seismic event and a possible unreported event that occurred about two minutes prior to the magnitude 1.7 
pay attention to chart labels and any captions beneath any images. Now this possible unreported event shown here occurred only about two minutes prior to the reported magnitude 1.7 other event. This one was very strange and almost looks like some type of volcanic tremor. That interpretation may be incorrect. However, the characteristics do look somewhat similar. This event contained dominant low frequencies and did not go beyond 2000 amplitude count as recorded by seismic station maps in the AV network. So who knows what this is. But I do believe it could be related to this right here. Now here is the peculiar magnitude 1.7 seismic event labeled by USGS as other event. A high pass 0.8 hertz filter was added. Now this event is very strange, yes, but this could be showing five earthquakes. Notice one, two, three, four, five, maybe a few more, but it looks like there's five. Look, one, two, three, four, five. Oh, maybe six. Huh, maybe there are six. Again, this event is strange, but this could be showing five or six earthquakes striking in such rapid succession along with low frequency tremor. So instead of this being one strange event that USGS cannot understand, I think they're two separate events but interconnected by the same process. A rapid fire swarm with harmonic or volcanic tremor during it. I don't know, but very interesting. Now let's scroll down to the very, very strange events in Hawaii. Now guys, this is the main course of the video and this is so crazy. Let me read. On January 23rd, 2019, three very peculiar seismic events were detected by seismic stations across the big island of Hawaii. Then, on January 28, 2019, another peculiar event occurred. Now it is likely the January 28th event talked about later in this post, is separate from the three January 23rd events, but you never know. All of these events were labeled as other event by USGS due to their very strange characteristics. First, I'm going to talk about the three, quote unquote, deep long period high frequency seismic events on January 23rd, 2019, near the southern tip of the big island of Hawaii. I have labeled here seismic stations, the pentagons you see are seismic stations that I have labeled, and the diamonds you see are the strange events. Now the January 23rd events are ones that I have never seen before. They were deep, but not too deep, striking between about 32.9 kilometers to 48.1 kilometers. One of the more peculiar aspects of these seismic events is that with time, they would reportedly get smaller and get deeper almost giving the strange illusion that something was traveling and plunging into the depths of the earth. Isn't that crazy? So this is what happened. It started right here. Here's the first one, right? Well, the second one occurred right here, and the third one occurred right here, traveling in this pattern, right? But they were also getting smaller, and they were also getting deeper, giving someone the illusion that something pierced the crust right here and was plunging deep into the earth. Also, nobody likely felt these events due to how long they lasted, the lack of strong amplitude strength, and the depth of these events. However, due to the depth, the following seismic traces were recorded all over the big island of Hawaii. Now, the fourth diamond that you see right here, the magnitude 1.4 other event, will be talked about in just a minute. Use the map here if you wish to reference the locations of the seismic stations shown in the data below. Now you will notice that these events contain high range frequencies, but also contain a drastic amount of time compared to their amplitudes, and I'm about to show them in just a second, they are crazy. Again, they contain a drastic amount of time compared to their amplitudes, and also occurred at a depth much deeper than a lot of the seismicity in the area. Because of those characteristics, I am naming this event, or these events, excuse me, deep, long period, high frequency events. However, if this is a new type of seismic event just recently discovered, it would need a much better name than that. But that would tech would actually be the technical term. So, everything about these events has me scratching my head because they are extremely amazing and I'm just so dumbfounded that something like this could occur. Now down here I do leave the link to the event pages, but the event pages don't show too much info. So, 
but you can go there if you want. I left the links. Now, first, I will show the seismic helicopter chart to one of the seismic stations that detected this event. Note how the events at first glance almost look like some weird form of surface noise. An example, a truck, large herd of bison, etc. However, these events were confirmed to be real seismic events by USGS and fully supported by the data. Then I will show some other helicopter charts in slideshow format, just to give an overview of how some of the stations detected this event. Then, last but not least, I will show the seismic plots I created by using Swarm, Waves, and the Iris database. Please always pay attention to plot chart labels and any captures beneath any images, blah, 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 blah. These events on January 23rd, 2019 were very peculiar. Could they have something to do with some type of offshore volcanic activity? Take a look and let me know what you think. Or do we have a machine that is plunging into the earth to keep earth from killing itself because the outer core isn't spinning anymore? Remember the movie Core? <laughs> it brings back memories of that movie. So we have seismic station HTCD in the HV network on the southern Hawaiian coast of the Big Island. Here's the first event. I couldn't believe my eyes. I thought they were just talking about this right here and the rest was surface noise, right? No, I could not believe my eyes. This strange event labeled by USGS as other event, this one was labeled as magnitude 3.0. And they're just doing the amplitudes, guys. They're not counting the amount of time it lasted. Magnitude 2.3 and magnitude 2.1. Over a broad period of time, they released an ex insane amount of energy that if this just happened within one minute it probably would have been along the lines of like a 7.0 earthquake but it was more drawn out right so let's scroll down right here this is just a quick look at the main magnitude 3.0 deep long period high frequency event via waves and multiple surrounding seismic stations you can't see it on spdd because the station has a glitch right there but it still did occur showing up all across the big island of hawaii and then right here, I do have the slideshow. Let's, wow, look at that, guys. Look, it's right here, right here, and right here. You see that? And then I think there was another one, actually, right about here, but that one wasn't reported, and I haven't really looked at that yet. But the main, the three main ones that were reported was this one right here. Look at that. Look at that, guys. Doesn't that look like some type of crazy surface activity? No, but it's not. It's not. And I don't know, guys. I it freaked me out when I first saw this. Look at this thing. Look at this, and look at the time period, right? Look, these aren't seconds, guys. These are hour, hour, minute, minute. Ten to fifteen to twenty to twenty-five to thirty to thirty-five. Wow. This is a seismogram, waveform, spectrogram, and spectra plot showing the main 3.0 deep, long period, high frequency event. Notice how it lasted almost 30 minutes and had high range frequencies, except the frequencies seemed to remain below 15 hertz, but it did have weak frequencies going well beyond that. But look at this, guys. Again, I'm going to go up to the helicorders because look at that. It looks just insane on the helicorders that I thought this was surface noise at first. But all of these helicorders from distant stations all across the Big Island of Hawaii are detecting this. What? What? Yeah, guys, sorry, I'm just, this is one of, the, one of the most exciting seismic events I have ever gone to analyze, ever, since I discovered my interest in seismic activity. Look at that. What the hell? And they got smaller and smaller and smaller and deeper and deeper and deeper. Again, giving the illusion that something was plunging into the earth. My goodness. Now, this is from the same event right here. You see this burst right here? This first burst in energy. This first spike right here is this, down here. Here we see a three-plot image visualizing the first burst of energy from the main 3.0 deep long period high frequency event. This is only the first burst, guys. And contain mid-range frequencies, again, just like we see on the spectra plot of the event right here. Spectra plot is pretty much exactly the same, looks very similar. So let's go down to the second reported event. Now again, the 3.0 occurred at 32.9 kilometers in depth. Then, later, we have this one. Now, this is the second reported other event for January 23rd, 2019. And it was a magnitude 2.3 at 39.7 kilometers in depth. That struck, now let's see, notice it is smaller and deeper than the magnitude 3.0 that just struck only two hours prior. and looked a little bit different, 
but it is coming from the same process, I believe, because it's near the same location, has somewhat of the same characteristics and the same long period characteristics as well, and it's even deeper. So let's go down to the third reported event. And here's the third reported other event for January 23rd, 2019. It was magnitude 2.1 at 48.1 kilometers in depth. Now this one occurred approximately five hours and 30 minutes after the most recent reported event. As seen in the event just prior, this event right here is also smaller and deeper. So what the heck were these extremely peculiar deep long period high frequency events? Three of them occurred within only 7 hours and 23 minutes, but it did look like there were a couple other smaller ones throughout the day. Regardless, what the heck could cause such a signature? Why were these events losing strength while deepening? If you have any idea as to what these could be, please shoot me an email at WashingtonMagma at Yahoo.com. Now, I will very quickly show the data to the next event reported by USGS for Hawaii to be a magnitude 1.4 other event. This struck on January 28, 2019, just five days after the January 23rd events. Let me scroll down and show you it. And here it is right here. Although this one was somewhat deep as well, resting around 23.8 kilometers in depth, the characteristics look much different than the January 23rd events. They could be separate or they could be related, I'm unsure. However, check it out right here. This is crazy. All right, so this is the magnitude 1.4 of their event at 23.8 kilometers in depth. This event is extremely peculiar, but again, is very dissimilar to the January 23rd events just shown. However, I must ask, what is this thing? It is very peculiar and carries dominant low to mid-range frequencies. These plots were filtered using a 1 Hz high-pass filter. Notice dominant frequencies between 5 Hz and 10 Hz. Then there's a big gap, and then dominant frequencies rest at about, I'm going to say, probably 2 Hz. Let's scroll down. This is unfiltered. Now, this is the same event, guys. So what was going on in late January off the coast of the Big Island of Hawaii? Shoot me an email if you can explain these events. Stay tuned. So that is it for right now, guys. Weren't those events off the southern tip of the Big Island of Hawaii odd? I cannot think of any seismic event that can do that. Plus, they got smaller and they got deeper, going in a strange direction, giving the appearance that something really was plunging into the depths of the Earth. What do you think they were? Volcanic eruptions? methane eruptions, or maybe an earth digger capable of traveling to the outer core? <laughs> if you've seen the movie called The Core, then you know what I'm talking about. I don't know, but I would love to hear what you guys think it could be. Also, if you haven't already, please check out my website and keep your eyes on multiple pages since I am still actively adding new content. It already contains a crazy amount of info, so go to the description box below and click the link right under my email address. Also, why did Petrolia, California see an earthquake swarm right where the Cascadia subduction zone ends? Is it related to the near silence that we have been seeing in the United States for the past few days? As of right now, it seems seismic activity is very slowly rising back to normal levels. All volcanoes in the Cascade Range seem to be quiet as well. Everything is just a little too quiet, except for the little spurt in seismic activity here and there and random spots like Lincoln, Montana. You know, it has been 40 years since the last major volcanic eruption in the continental United States, and about 15 years or so since the last volcanic event as well. I think we should see another type of volcanic eruption in the next 10 years or so. But which volcano will it be? Will it be Glacier Peak? I sure hope not, because it's not monitored very well. Is it May Rainier? I really hope not, too. But let me know what you think below. Thank you all for watching, and feel free to shoot me an email whenever you want, especially if you need help with something. I always try to reply to every email, and I always try to reply to most of the comments on my YouTube videos. But some, I do have to say, won't get around to, so if you do have something important, please shoot me an email. God bless. Ben Ferriolo, signing off.